You're back with The Nation. Well, controversy comes with the territory for high-profile climate change sceptic Lord Christopher Monckton. The former newspaper editor and policy adviser to Maggie Thatcher's government attracts plenty of attention for arguing that man-made climate change isn't warming the world anywhere near as fast as many scientists will tell you it is. The hereditary peer says he's happy to debate climate change with anyone, but most scientists here won't. For example, we invited Wellington climate scientist Martin Manning onto the programme today, but he declined. He said a debate with Lord Monckton would be pointless, as he misrepresents more than 40 years of science. Shortly, we will talk to Professor Glenn McGregor, Director of the School of Environment at the University of Auckland. But first, uh, Lord Monckton joins us to discuss his views. Uh, welcome to the nation. Thanks sure, for being with us. Sure, it's a pleasure to be here. You do accept that there is such a thing as global warming. Indeed, you do accept that some of it is man-made. Why then do you campaign so vociferously against those who advocate uh, global policies to reduce climate change or to re reduce greenhouse gas emissions? There are two main reasons. One, the world is not warming as fast as the usual suspects said it would. This is a matter of easily verifiable fact. Mm -hmm. Secondly, even if it were about to warm as fast as the usual suspects say it would, and that mean we'd have to see it warming at least three times as fast as it has been over the last 60 years, and there's no physical reason why it should do that, even if it were to do that, if you're the sort that does science by consensus, like Martin Manning, whom you've just quoted, 40 years of science and how dare he, blah, blah, blah. If you do science by consensus, then the economic peer-reviewed literature, rather than the reports written for socialist governments around the world, like Stern or Garneau, is near unanimous in saying that it is many times cheaper to sit back, do nothing and enjoy the sunshine and adapt in a focused way to any consequences of global warming that may occur if, when, where and only to the extent that they may occur than it is to spend a single cent now on doing anything at all about it. That's the economic So you say concentrate like on ameliorating not. the problems it causes rather than trying to stop it? It's adaptation rather than mitigation, to use the language of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, the Intergovernmental Panel wants to justify its continued existence by saying we must mitigate. No, economically speaking, we most certainly mustn't. Mm. We must simply wait and adapt as and if and where, and as I say, only to the extent necessary. Mm. There's actually no likelihood of any damage arising unless we get at least two Celsius of warming above where we are mm. today. And the likelihood of that okay. happening in 100 years is very small. So essentially you are suggesting that a massive conspiracy or con has been perpetrated on many people, in fact, you know, the majority of people, one would say, in, in the Western world or the developed world, I've that this whole thing is a farce and a fallacy? Be very careful not to use words like conspiracy or con, because otherwise the, the usual suspects will say, well, there you are, he's just a rabid conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, well give me I your think, honest opinion. Do you think th it is a conspiracy uh, and no, a con? I, no, I think that there's a small element of conspiracy among the climate gate emailers. We now know yep. that they were indeed linked together. We all knew who yeah. they were doing the yeah. bad yeah. science. But that's not a up Bogus data. To talk to other people in uh, your field. Well, to start saying we're going to suppress data, refuse other people the chance to check it, interfere, interfere with the editors of peer reviewed journals to bully them not to accept results that they don't like. No, that's not right. And that's what they were doing. And you can read the Climate Gate emails online mm. and be as horrified as everybody who has read them. So there's an element there of what one might call conspiracy. It's small scale, but it's there. But no, I think what has happened is that governments have found it um, socially convenient, politically expensive and above all wickedly financially profitable to take advantage of this mm. scam and the media of course are profiting by saying world to end shock rather than the truth which is very boring and doesn't sell very many newspapers which is climate continuing changeable no shock all right what is the motivation then and you may have hinted at some of them what is the motivation for this misrepresentation as you would have us believe of the science and I'm looking for the group that makes millions out of it or for the person that suddenly rules the world um, as a result of this and I can't r really find them. Um, well you would need to read the um September the 15th, 2009 draft of the Copenhagen Treaty to see that they were indeed planning to set up a world government uh, using the climate as an excuse. And this government was going to have powers to shut down the free market. Okay, who are they? 
there, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat. Uh, they drafted this treaty. It was put up online on a very obscure UN website where they hoped nobody would see it, but they could later say it's been there all the time if anybody challenged it. Uh, it failed, I'm glad to say, because we did publicize it. And when I publicized it in America in a speech that re uh, received a million hits in its first week and eventually two and a half million hits, the other side immediately said, well, it's just conspiracy theory. He's made it all up. But a radio presenter in Melbourne actually took the trouble of taking what I said and the draft treaty yeah. to a QC in Melbourne who said that every word I'd said about that mm. treaty and the world government they were planning was absolutely so true. So is, climate change, is climate change a creation of a group of people at the UN who want to have a one world government? Then? No, the, the, as, as you very fairly said at the outset, the theory that if you add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere you will get some warming is of course correct. What has happened is that some of the usual suspects have decided to push it beyond that and then having pushed it beyond that and having realized I think many of them now that they have pushed it too far they find it rather difficult to back off again mm. so I don't think it's so much a conspiracy as really a kind of worldwide embarrassment okay. that they've gone too far they've got it wrong but they dare not say so because they were made to look silly okay in New Zealand we are introducing or in the process of introducing an emissions trading scheme cap and trade scheme yes. essentially that will include uh, agriculture much to the dismay of many in the agricultural and sector rightly so. Do you think we are ahead of the world, following the world, being silly in our response to Well, you are being change. silly. You have the European emissions trading scheme, which is, is now, as we speak, failing for the fourth successive time. You have one in Australia, which they're trying to bring in and is going to bring down the government that brought it in and probably throw the Greens into the outer darkness forever, to which I would say good riddance. You are going to be... Uh, among a very small group of countries in the world who are committing um economic harakiri by introducing this. I'm going to talk later today to the United Farmers of Whangarei and I'm going to be uh, saying to them there is no scientific need for any such scheme. There is no economic justification for it. All they're doing if you push this through is to shoot your own economy in the foot. Mm. Don't go there. Finally, I know that there is, if you like, uh, an unwritten strategy now amongst uh, those who advocate climate change policies mm. uh, and are active in this area, saying, let's not debate the science anymore. Mm. Let's say the scientific debate is over. The yes. fact, perhaps, that you couldn't find anyone uh, from the other side to debate you uh, in New Zealand mm. uh, might indicate that that is the strategy. Do you believe that in terms of public opinion and public perceptions, that scientific debate is over? Very far from it. It's gone very much the other way. After all, it was the Institute for Public Policy Research, a Marxist think tank in the UK, which in the late summer of 2006 first wrote round to all its fellow think tanks around the world saying, come on chaps, the left must unite in saying that the science is settled, the debate is over and now we must act. Within weeks they were all saying it and they've been saying it like robots ever since. But the public are no longer buying. If you look at the, the opinion poll figures here and in Australia, the support for this notion that global warming is terrible is plummeting. That answers my question. I thank you very much indeed for your time, Lord Monckton. Enjoy the rest of your time. And Sean, thank you. you Sean. God bless you and God bless New Zealand.